Good morning. We will stand as able for our call to worship. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our souls. He leads us in right paths for his name's sake. We confess, Lord, that we often wander from your right paths. We often resist lying down in green pastures, believing that our ways are sure and our actions pleasant. Bring us back to your fold and protect us as we wander on our journey of life. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff comfort us. Help us, Lord, to trust in your steadfast love and protection. Give us the courage to follow you, even when the paths are dark. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oil. Our cups overflow. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord God, anoint us with the oil of David as we worship you this day. Give us a clear vision of your provision for our lives, that we might live by your goodness and mercy forever. Join me in the gathering prayer. Holy God, you shepherd us by your tender care, leading us to lush grasslands and still waters. We hear your voice and respond to our faith. Draw us never nearer to you to the sound of your voice. Give us your confidence in your saving grace. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together in hymn number 340, it's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. 
Her words to God are giving realism. Surely the goodness of God overflows in our lives. Take time to count your blessings. The works of God are all around us. In these moments, we have the opportunity to offer ourselves and our substance to extend God's work on earth. The offering plates are in the center and the back of the sink. beautiful day, for this day in our fellowship here of worship and music, for mothers, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, teachers, those in our lives who have been nurturers to us, we thank you, Lord, for the birth of new babies, for people becoming grandmothers and great-grandmothers as the circle continues. We ask you to bless these gifts that we have given on this day for the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the children's message, Kathy. Children, come on. Sisters <laughs> Um, 
Scripture for today is a very familiar passage, a very familiar chapter for most of us. If you have studied it or learned it in Sunday school, which most of us probably have heard it in weddings, etc. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We'll be reading four to seven verses. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. May the Lord and his blessing to the reading. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Mothers can be aunts, grandmothers, cousins, close friends. Sometimes even older siblings can take on motherly responsibilities to care for their younger brothers and sisters. I know that throughout my life, I've taken on adopted, so to speak, mothers and grandmothers. And I find that it has only allowed my heart to expand and find love where I wouldn't have tried to normally expand. Finding patient and kind love sometimes seems in today's world more difficult to seek out. We live in an age that's so filled with negativity and impatience. We always want answers at a moment's notice. We get frustrated when someone doesn't call or text us immediately. We forget that other people have lives outside of the ones they have with us. I know, personally, I'm very guilty of experiencing impatience. In fact, I would consider it to be one of my weaker personality traits. And I'm sure that there are others here that may be able to relate to this. Dan is nodding his head, as I've heard him say from the pulpit many times. <laughs> Even Jesus lost his patience with the money changers in the temple when he flipped over their booths in aggravation. Which makes me wonder sometimes what Jesus might have been like as a young boy. How his mother, his earthly mother, Mary, responded to episodes that he might have had with impatience or daily frustrations. Because remember, when Jesus came down, he was a man. He felt pain, he felt sickness, fatigue, etc. And there's no question in my mind that he had his moments where his mom cut her eyes on Jesus. And I'm sure we all know the face as we've all experienced it as young children. One of the more striking aspects of the scripture this morning, to me anyway, is the line which states that love keeps no record of wrongs. So let's think about this for just a moment, especially here on Mother's Day. Now I know that my mom loves me, but there were times growing up that I felt that records of my wrongs were kept in a vault in a concrete cellar. Maybe not on our property, somewhere up in the mountains. <laughs> but of course, I know this isn't true. That's my get out of jail free card. Mom praised my accomplishments and made my wrongs into lessons on how to better prepare for the next time when this particular event would come up. But this is really a striking statement that love keeps no record of wrongs. We are often quick to judge someone based on their past wrongs, both large and minute. Just think about the woman at the well. She was living with a man who wasn't her husband and had been married five times prior. Jesus did not judge this woman, but rather had her drink from the well and receive living water to become metaphorically cleansed in his blood and his love. Can we not offer just a fraction of this forgiveness for those around us? How do we look at love on a day like Mother's Day, especially in a world seemingly filled with strife and weakness? What we must first remember is that we are all loved. Though at times it may not feel this way, Love is what brings us together today as a congregation. We are brought together under the love that Christ displayed as he hung on the cross, the truest and most selfless form of love that has ever been recorded. Selfless love is not so often found around us that it goes unnoticed. This is the kind of love that we need to be displaying every day of the year. We don't need to boast or tell others what we did or didn't do for them, but instead do for them because we care for and love them. Love is a feeling of comfort, a feeling that we are protected and not alone. Many of the women in our lives have provided us with a comfort that goes unmatched by anything we felt since. An example of this kind of love 
of the first examples that I thought of that I know several members of this congregation have experienced comes from New Bethel Church of the Brethren member Myrtle Connor. Myrtle was the longtime head cook at Camp Bethel, making those famous Camp Bethel rolls that we all know about from the art dining hall. One of Myrtle's great acts of love and service is her dedication to sending cards to her friends and loved ones. Myrtle, years ago, used to send out handmade cards before it became too overwhelming and stressful. So then she resorted to her Hallmark cards. She would send anniversary, birthday, graduation cards religiously, never missing a date. And for me, it was always the first card I received in the mail, sometimes two weeks early. For those of us that know Myrtle, we know that she's now in poor health and doesn't always make the deadline for these cards. But not that she needs to, though. I know for us as a family, a few years ago, in the middle of COVID, she sent a bulk mailing of cards to our house to cover all the dates that she had missed. I think there were Valentine's cards, birthday cards, Christmas cards in the middle of springtime. Myrtle is an example of selfless love. The scripture also states that love always protects. So what does this mean? I'm sure that the parents in this congregation would agree that they always have had their children at the forefront of their minds always wanting to protect and save them from the evils that are often found in our secular world. I'm sure that grandparents might even feel this on a deeper level, because not only do they feel this way toward their children, but also to their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Older siblings may feel this way about their younger siblings, or perhaps maybe you have some young neighbors in your neighborhood that you want to protect and care for. If you feel about Anyone in this way, you are showing the biblical definition of love. You are comforting selflessly, and you are being Christ to someone other than yourself. Just a few weeks ago, downstairs in the fellowship hall, we took part in our annual tradition of love feast. The reenactment and the reenactment and the service of the Last Supper of the Apostles. During this time, Jesus selflessly got on his knees to wash the dirt grime off the apostles' feet, including that of Judas Iscariot, the man who would later kiss Jesus on the cheek, sealing his fate for inevitable crucifixion. The number of times that I've had to serve someone in the way that Christ served his disciples is nowhere near where it should be. I've donated to various causes. I've helped out an old friend or family member mow their yard. Yet selfless assistance is something that I struggle with as a human being. We often grumble and ask to help out our neighbor. We bite our tongues and go about with the task at hand, yet we lose the true meaning of what it is to show selfless love to one another. So what will it take for us to be constant comforters to those around us? This is not something that we can really study in a book or even take from the scriptures, but rather practice in the real world with real people who need that love and comfort that we all deserve. We need to do as Christ would want us to do. Love without boasting it, without making a production about the good that we have shown. Today's world is very quick to immediately announce from the rooftops what we've done. I said it would take our love to the streets as if a silent auction. We can give what we think is appropriate but we don't necessarily need to tell everyone what it was exactly that we've done. As I mentioned earlier in our Georgia Concerns, uh, the Carolina District yesterday celebrated its ministry mission day at Fairview Church of the Brethren in Rocky Mountain. Briefly, for those that don't know, this is a time where mostly pastors and ministers, as well as annual conference delegates, gather in sessions to go over the annual conference theme, and the study of how we can strengthen our congregations in various workshops. 
The speaker yesterday was our former pastor, uh, Patrick Starkey, giving a message on being bound together in love. And something that he said was asking us all to raise our hand if we'd ever heard a sermon or dozens of sermons on love. And of course, all 60 people raised their hand. Because love is a topic that has been ingrained in us from the inception, our inception, into the church. And I'm kind of going to echo what Patrick said, that nothing that I've said in this sermon is going to be new ground. Nothing is monumental. Yet love is a topic that we can forever look at from all angles and never truly understand it. But my hope is this. As we celebrate today, simply for being another day of life, let's celebrate love, that ever-constant comforter that rests in our hearts and is enshrouded around us. We have so many people in our lives that give us love every day. And if you feel this isn't true, just look around you. Because everyone here loves you and has your best interests at heart. Love is patient. Love is kind. Patience, kindness, fruits of the Spirit that are taught to us as small children, whether in Sunday school, vacation Bible school, camp. Yet do we always show patience and kindness when we think that we are showing love? It does not envy, it does not boast. How often do we envy and boast when others have what we don't? It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices for the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. I felt that it was important to reinstate that scripture. This brief yet very, very familiar scripture. So that we leave here not forgetting its significant meaning in our lives. So where do we go from here? Let's do our best to love in the ways that so many among us can love. Whether it is our mothers, grandmothers, friends, church family. We can all, men and women, provide comfort and support to those in our personal levels. As a church family, it is part of our responsibility to comfort those, not only that we know, but those in our global community as well. We are stewards of the earth. And part of the stewardship is the love and comfort that we are to show our brothers and sisters in Christ. Love perseveres. This is a very small part of the scripture, yet it is so powerful and it's something that we don't often ponder or know. Why is it that we have memories of loved ones who have gone before us? Whether mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, close friends, we keep a part of our heart reserved for loving people who help shape and mold us who we are today. Little things remind us of who someone was or how they were. A song comes on that takes us to another place and a time, a smell or a taste enchants us. We hold on to the love that was. We take it and store it in our hearts. Love carries on through pain. It is the spark in a pitch black tunnel. It is the hope and the warmth that we need to continue on in our lives. Show it to others. And it will be shown to you. Amen. Now please stand, everyone, and join us in hymn number 524.